Hey guys, so I'm going to do the review sheet for your test this Friday. This is the calculus review, so if you're Algebra 2, go look for your video. Um, Alright, so first question states, find the value of k such that the limit as x approaches 4 exists. That means I want to find this value of k. Now, for the limit to exist, that means that the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of f of x must equal the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of f of x. So basically the left hand limit has to equal the right hand limit. So in order to figure this out, I'm going to find out the left hand limit and the right hand limit. Well the left hand limit is contained in the first polynomial and what I'm going to do is just plug in 3 times 4 plus 2 and get my value of 14. This means that my left hand is touching 14 y equals 14. That means my right hand also has to touch 14 in order for the limit to exist because the limit exists if the left and the right touch. So what I'm going to do is take the right polynomial, this is right because it's greater than 4, and I'm going to plug in 4 for x. I don't know k, but I knew, do know that I have to equal 14 in order for the right hand to meet the left hand. Alright, so 5 times 4 is 20 plus k equals 14. I'm going to solve for k, and the value of k that allows a limit to exist at x equals 4 is negative 6. Alright, the next question says, given the graph below, find the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side. So 2 is here, and I want to see as I approach 2 from the right. So from the right, I'm approaching 4, so my answer is 4. The next question involves various types of limits and different types of limit techniques, so always use substitution first. So for this one, I would always plug in 0, because that's what the limit is approaching. And unfortunately, I get radical 2 minus radical 2, which is 0 over 0, which is your indeterminate form. So I know I need to do something else to solve for my limit. I'm going to analyze this thing, and I see that I have radicals on the top, and they're conducted by subtraction. So I'm going to use the conjugate rule. So I'm going to rewrite this thing, and I'm going to multiply it by the conjugate of the numerator, because that's the one with the radicals. Multiplying it by the conjugate simply means just changing the middle sign to positive, or opposite of what it is, and multiplying the top and the bottom by that same thing. Alright, so because you multiply by the conjugate, all you need to do is multiply the first and the last, because the middle two terms cancel out. If you want to do FOIL, go for it, but really all you have to do is multiply the first and the last. So radical 2 minus t times radical 2 minus t is just 2 minus t, and then radical 2 times radical 2 is a minus 2. All over t times radical 2 minus t plus radical 2. In the numerator, my 2's cancel because they're opposite signs. I'm left with negative t over t times radical 2 minus t plus radical 2. Now what happens here is actually the t's cancel out, so I'm left with the limit as t approaches 0 of negative 1, don't forget the negative, of radical 2 minus t plus radical 2. All I have to do now is do substitution one more time, and hopefully I get an answer that is not 0 over 0 and I actually end up getting radical 2 plus radical 2, so my final answer is 2 negative 1 over 2 radical 2. That is my limit as t approaches 0. The next question, um, again, always try substitution first. So what I'm going to do is just plug in negative 1, and if that works, then that is my limit as x approaches negative 1. When I plug this in, I get a value of 256 and that is my limit. The next question, again, I'm going to plug in using substitution. So negative 6 squared plus 12 times negative 6 plus 36 over negative 6 plus 6. And unfortunately, I get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate, so I'm going to have to do something else with this thing. I'm going to choose to factor and see if I can factor the numerator, and I can. Um, I'm just going to change this as the limit approaches negative 6, and the numerator will be factored Factors of 36 that add to 12 are 6 and 6. This cancels out the denominator, and I'm left with the limit as x approaches negative 6 of x plus 6. I'm going to substitute negative 6 in now, and I get my limit as x approaches negative 6 
equals zero. Now, just a side note, I know I keep running the limit, the limit, the limit. You should definitely keep doing that. That is proper notation. If you do not do it, it's really not taking the limit. You're just plugging in. Next question is limit as x approaches zero. Now, again, I'm going to do this one more time. Plug this in. This is really all cubed. And I get zero over zero again. Now, I realize that I have sine and over an x, and I kind of am thinking, well, I know this rule that sine of x over x equals 1 when the limit as x approaches 0. This is a rule. So maybe I can manipulate this guy here to make him look like this. Now, remember, it's basically just the same thing over the same thing. That's what you want. Um, so what I can do is I can actually um, break this whole thing apart. I know I have x squared on the bottom. For this to cancel to 1, that means I would also need a squared on the top. Well, I can get that because I got cubed, sine cubed. And just so I don't change the problem, I need this sine of x to keep it together. Sine squared times sine of x is the same thing as sine cubed. I did not change the problem at all. I just manipulated it. Now I get my rule to cancel to 1, and I really have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x. Just substitute the 0 in, and I end up getting my limit as 0. Next question, um, again, use substitution always first. If you plug in negative 4 cubed, you get 0 over 0. Again, indeterminate, you got to do something else. So what I want to do is I am going to rewrite this thing, and I'm going to factor the numerator. This factoring is perfect cubes, um, which I did go over with you guys in a do now. It's something you should know from pre-calc. So I'm going to review this. The first thing you do is take the cube of both things, x cubed, the cube of that is x, and the cube root of 64 is 4. Now, to get this thing, the second thing that you're multiplying by, because factoring is breaking things up into two or more pieces, um, I know that x times x squared will get me x cubed, and I know that 4 times 16 will get me 64. So now the only thing you really have to figure out is the middle term. Um, let me just rewrite this 16. Oh, okay, I guess it's going to stay there like that. So this is a 16. All right. So I need to figure out the middle term now. If you remember, I told you the trick was same sign as this. So this is both plus because they're the same, opposite, and positive. So that's the trick for the signs. And now you just got to multiply 4 times x to get your middle term. Um, these terms will cancel. And the limit as x approaches negative 4 of x squared minus 4x plus 16. All I'm going to do is substitute negative 4 in here. And this gets me 16, that gets me 16, this also is 16, so my final answer is just 48. Okay, so the next one, again, you're just going to plug in 0, because that's what my limit is doing, approaching 0. And unfortunately, you get 0 over 0 again. So I'm going to rewrite this thing. This one is a little tricky, but it's not too bad. Um, if you remember a negative exponent, bring something to the denominator. So really, my first thing is really just 1 over 3 plus h. And then my second thing is subtracting 1 over 3, because a negative exponent brings it to the denominator. Now, this is a technique that I can use with common denominators, because I'm going to make the numerator combine together. To do that, I need a common denominator of 3 times 3 plus h. This needs 3 plus h, and the other guy just needs 3. So I'm going to multiply these in. So I end up getting 3 minus 3 minus h. Remember to distribute the negative as well. Um, over 3 times 3 plus h, all over h. These 3's will cancel and I'll be ending up with a negative h over 3 times 3 plus h all over h, and I could even go even further and keep change flip because this and this are both fractions. So negative h over 3 times 3 plus h times flip over 1 over h. These will cancel, and I'm left with the limit 
as h approaches 0 of 1 over 3, actually negative 1, I almost missed that because the negative sign is there, of negative 1 over 3 times 3 plus h. I'm just going to plug in a 0 because now I can do my substitution and they end up with a negative 1 over 9. Alright, next question is an infinity limit. Now, we did some basic infinity limits on Wednesday, and basically, if you remember what I said, um, the highest power is the one that grows the fastest and is the one that overtakes the whole problem. So really, these lower powers mean nothing. The higher power is the one that dominates the whole problem. So if you think about plugging in negative infinity, I know you can't plug in negative infinity, it's not a thing you can really do, but you can kind of get the concept that if I plug in a negative number to an odd power, I'm always going to end up getting a negative number out. And if I take the fifth power of infinity, I just end up getting infinity. So my answer is negative infinity. All right, next question says, find the limit as 4 appro approaches 4 from the right. So here's the deal. The first one doesn't even involve 4, so I'm not even going to look at him. The second one is approaching 4 from the left because this is between 0 and 4. And this is approaching 4 from the right because I'm going from 4 and greater than 4. So my right limit of 4 is just 4 because it's the third piece of the piecewise function. 4 from the left is the second one because it's between 0 and 4. So on the graph I would be between 0 and 4, both filled in circles. If I want to approach from the left, I'd be on this piece. So I'm just going to plug in 4 because um, that's the limit I'm analyzing, and I get 16 minus 16, and that's 0. And then f of 4 is still the second one, because it has the equal to signs with 4, and that is also 0. So it says, if it is f of x continuous at x equals 4, and y or I not? Well, I know I am not continuous at x equals 4, because the limit as the x value approaches 4 does not equal f of 4. I should really put f of x inside of here. Okay, now these two things are seeing if my limit exists and if you realize when the left and the right are combined you get the limit as x approaches 4 simply as x approaches 4. That's the left and the right together which makes the limit together. This limit does not exist because I'm meeting 4 here and 0 down here. They do not match. This is completely at different levels on the y-axis. This is the y-axis. So really I have a jump discontinuity. This is a non-removable type of discontinuity because I can't simply just fill in the dot. I have to actually I would have to actually connect these, which is not possible. You can only fill in holes when you want to remove a discontinuity. You cannot fix a jump. All right, the next question says use the intermediate value theorem to show that the function has a zero. Now, if you remember, the intermediate value theorem states that between two values a and b on a closed interval, there must be a value for a and a value for b. Now, if the value of a or b are positive and negative, you must have to cross through the x-axis at least once. So I'm trying to see if I get values out of this function on that closed interval that produce a negative and positive, therefore meaning that I have to cross the x-axis, you have to give, give me a, a zero if you're crossing the x-axis. So what I'm simply going to do is just plug in both of the boundaries. So I'm going to plug in zero, and that gets me zero squared minus zero minus cosine of zero. That's zero minus zero minus one. So negative one is the lower bound. The upper bound would require me to plug in f of pi. So I'd have pi squared minus pi cosine times pi, well, minus cosine times pi, be pi squared minus pi minus negative 1, because that's what cosine of pi is. This would become a positive, and if you approximately plug, if you plug this into your calculator, you would approximately get 7.728. Now, what the intermediate value theorem states is that if you get a value 
there must be a value in between those two values. That's what it states. So basically, your outputs must have a value in between the two outputs. So because negative 1 is less than or equal to some value x, which is less than or equal to 7.728, there has to be a 0. Because if I'm at negative 1, and I'm at 7.728, there must be a value in between those two values. So based on the intermediate value theorem, there must be a zero. Um, I would definitely explain more than just that, just state because I get a value that's less than, but that's because you're actually, just because you're going from a negative value to a positive value as an output, you must have a zero in between them. The next question gives you a graph and asks you to evaluate several limits. So the first question says, find the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. So I'm going to look at negative 2 from the right, and I'm getting a value of negative 1. The next one says, find f of the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left. So I'm going to look at the left. And I'm also approaching negative 1. Because the left and the right meet, I also know that the limit as, just a side note, I also know that the limit as x approaches negative 2, not from the left and the right, from both sides exists. It has to be negative 1. That's just a side note. Um, the next question says, find the limit as x approaches 5. Well, if I look at x approaches 5, 5 is here. The limit is when you approach left and right. So the limit is 1 in this case. Okay, Not the point, not the value here. We're looking at this guy. All right. Now, the other one says find the limit as x approaches infinity. As x approaches infinity, I'm going positive, and the graph is actually going up towards infinity, so it's really just infinity. All right, the next one says f of negative 2. Well, that's an actual value. It's saying what y value do I get when I plug in x of negative 2? That's down here at negative 2. Okay, the next question is as the limit approaches x of negative x to negative 5. So I look at negative 5 and I say, well, there is no limit because the left-hand side approaches negative 1, the right-hand side approaches 0. So my limit as x approaches negative 5 does not exist. Um, as the limit approaches x to negative infinity, I'm looking at the negative x values, I go up to positive infinity. Okay, the next the last part says, if f of x is, is f of x continuous at negative 2, why or why not? Well, looking at negative 2, I am not continuous at x equals negative 2. And the reason why is because the limit as x approaches 2, remember this is from the right and the left, that equals negative 1, that does not equal f of negative 2, which equals negative 2. There is a hole in this graph. This is a removable discontinuity. Because all you had to do is fill in that little point as a part of your piecewise. Alright guys, I hope this video helped. Please study up. Your test is on Friday and good luck.